Good morning, you guys. Erin here at Eat, Move, Rest. Welcome back to another sunshiny day in Florida. We are seriously overdue for a what I eat in a day video, so this is a very special edition because it's not only going to be what I eat in a day as a breastfeeding mom of two, but what my two little ones are eating as well. So Max just turned three in December. Baby Liv is about to be eight months old in a couple days, so we've been having so much fun doing solids with her, and we know a lot of you have been asking for some baby led weaning inspiration, how to start solids, and what to do for a picky toddler. So all of that in today's video. Stay tuned, we're about to whip up something delicious for breakfast. I'm gonna make my baked berry oats, which is friendly for everyone, even baby Liv loves them, and some green smoothies. And we're gonna offer her her first taste of smoothie today as well. I don't wanna get too long-winded with baby led weaning because when Max started solids, I did a very thorough, all-encompassing informational video on baby led weaning. I'll link that below in the description. But if I were to give you guys some hard and fast rules to go by, I would say, first of all, knowing signs of when your baby is ready. Usually six months is a great time to start because baby's digestive system is fully prepared to be introduced to solid foods. You also want to look for good head and neck control, sitting up on their own, and most importantly, showing interest in solid foods. So grabbing and grasping and lip smacking when you're eating and drinking foods. Your baby may also be starting to pop some teeth, which Baby Liv now has six teeth already. She popped her first two, I think, at about five months old. She's been crawling, sitting up, even standing on her own without balancing on anything. She has been more than ready. So we started her at six months. As far as getting started, some great foods are soft fruits and vegetables. So we started with avocados, bananas, cooked sweet potatoes and squash, even some smashed peas are great. And you don't have to be a baby like weaning purist. So it doesn't mean you can only give your baby solid foods. You can also include some smoothies and soups and purees and spoon fed items as well. Like I said, applesauce, or a pureed squash. At six months old, baby has not yet developed the pincher grasp, so it's ideal to start with finger-shaped foods that are about the size and shape of your finger, like slicing pieces of toast. Foods that you want to avoid will be globs of honey and nut butter, although you can spread it thinly on something like a toast. You just don't want them to get too much caked in their mouths to the point where they can't swallow. Other foods like popcorn and hard nuts and vegetables and fruits that are way too crunchy and hard would be best to avoid early on. So if you're gonna do an apple, maybe a cooked apple or a steamed carrot would be ideal. Two common concerns with baby led weaning. Number one, it is too difficult. And I can say without a doubt, it is not difficult. It's actually easier because your baby gets to eat alongside you rather than you having to spoon feed them. So you can enjoy meals as a family together. And that also helps with your baby developing their own confidence, their own set of tastes. They're more likely to try new things because it's their choice. They get an experience of different tastes and textures, shapes and sizes. And most importantly, it helps your baby to gauge when they are still hungry versus when they are full. The other common concern, which I don't blame you for, is being concerned with is baby choking or is baby just gagging? So baby will gag on many foods, especially when getting started because the sensation of food, solid food going down the throat is a completely new sensation. So not to worry, baby's gag reflex is in their mouth, so their tongue will often push solid hard foods out when they can't swallow it. Don't freak out, trust me, your baby is pretty well equipped and there is no science or studies showing that baby led weaning puts your baby at higher risk for choking. In fact, some say it gives them less risk of choking. If you're super worried, we found a tool called the D-Choker, which you can actually get on Amazon that we keep in our household and travel with just in case of emergencies. On that note, one last rule of thumb is if an item is round and can fit in your fingers like this, it's best to quarter it. So if it's a grape, slice it into quarters, or if it's a cucumber, quarter it into long finger-shaped sticks for your baby. While we're not professionals, three of my favorite resources would be PCRM.org, which is the Physicians Committee for responsible medicine. Again, watching my old video, I provide links to helpful resources as well. Another favorite is Plant Based Juniors. They have an amazing Instagram account as well as a cookbook with tons of awesome suggestions in it. Last and finally would be vegankidsnutrition.com. She has tons of great courses and other resources. So if you guys want more vegan, kid-friendly, family-friendly style recipes, 
definitely check out our ebook and the meal planner, which has not only our ebook recipes, but all of our new recipes moving forward as well. We update it monthly. It's amazing. So the baked berry oats are pretty straightforward. I usually just mash up a couple of ripe bananas. I'll put in oats, chia, some kind of nut butter. So there's plenty of healthy omega-3 fats in there. Plant milk, baking powder, cinnamon. With baby led weaning, you'll want to avoid refined sugars and salt because their kidneys are not yet developed enough for excess salt intake or sodium. But something that is on the table is spices and oils. So oil can add extra calories and richness to your baby's meals. We are oil free as adults because we don't find it necessary, but it can be, it can be helpful for kiddos. It can be helpful for kiddos and spices as well will help to broaden their palate. So obviously you don't want to put cayenne pepper in your baby's dinner, but something like cinnamon can be amazing to help broaden their palate. She's like, okay, let's eat already. She is chomping at the bit. She's more than ready for breakfast. This little girl loves food. So it's been a fun experience. This baked oatmeal is a perfect one for kiddos because it takes oatmeal and makes it a little bit more solid so she's able to grasp it on her own. Ideally, when you take it out of the oven, let it set for 10 to 15 minutes so it can kind of solidify. And it's even better the next day because you can almost take it with you on the go as like baked squares. And it's funny because Max calls these birthday cake oats, they taste that good. So because we've been traveling, we don't have our high chair with us, but this walker has worked out really well. The only time we put her in it is for mealtime, otherwise we like to let her learn to walk on her own. But this really works out well because it's got a nice big tray on it. So I'm gonna start her out with a banana since she is ready to go. You wanna hold a spoon? <laughs> you gotta let it cool because it's piping hot. <laughs> so I obviously jumped the gun and scooped it a little early. It was still kind of soft, but she'll still be able to enjoy this. And it's also not a bad idea to let them experiment with using utensils. So she's got a little bamboo spoon. Sometimes I'll help her and just load it up with a little bit of oats so she can eat it herself. Depending on how hungry I am, I'll either do a big smoothie for breakfast, or if I'm not that hungry because I had a big dinner or something the night before, then I'll just do a quick pre-workout shake. So today is one of those days where I'm doing a quick shake, then I'll make my green smoothie, which I'm excited for Biv to try for her first time today after working out. So I'm adding in two scoops of protein because it's going to be for Dusty and I. We usually split these pre-workouts. So two and a half frozen bananas, two scoops of protein, and then I always add in some type of superfood powder. Your Super has one of my favorites. This is the Forever Beautiful blend. It's got chia, acai, maki, acerola, maca, and blueberry powder. This is a great antioxidant rich blend. Fantastic for beautifying your body from the inside out, hyper nourishing your cells with tons of antioxidants. So I'm gonna swig down my Forever Beautiful berry pre-workout shake and go get my sweat on and then I'll come back up probably have some baked oats and some smoothie. The best advice that gave me the most peace of mind when starting solids was just remember under one just for fun. So if your little one is under one years old, food is simply for fun, especially if you are still breastfeeding. A better name than baby led weaning would actually be baby led feeding because I'm not weaning her off of breast milk. So breast milk is still her primary source of nutrition and it should be at least for the first year of life. And on that note with supplementation too, I did not start Max on supplements until he was about one year old where breastfeeding usually starts to drastically decline. B12, D3, and omegas. These are our EPA and DHA. LG Omega. Okay, so now that I'm done with the sweat sesh, I'm gonna make my green smoothie for recovery. This is more of like a meal size portion of smoothie. I'm gonna do what I did with Max when he was first starting solids and leave out the protein powder and make this one a little bit more kid and baby friendly so Biv can try her very first green smoothie. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna throw in some flax seeds for healthy omega-3s. I'm gonna throw in some dulse for iodine, some daily green boost green powder for an added dose of minerals, a couple of pitted dates. It'll add that sweetness that the protein powder usually adds in. I'm gonna add in another Your Super Blend. This is their plant collagen. So rather than eating animal collagen to boost your own collagen stores, it's better to consume collagen promoting plant ingredients. So 
This one contains organic rice bran solubles, pea protein, tremella mushroom, lacuma, vanilla, and aloe vera powder. So it's perfect, especially for postpartum mamas who are dealing with either hair loss or new hair growth. This definitely helps promote. Lots of greens going in, Granny Smith green apple, a couple stalks of celery, a bunch of leaves of dino kale. This is really good kale right now. And then a small amount of ginger and turmeric, and then frozen fruit to make it thick and sweet. I'm gonna add in frozen bananas as usual, and then today I'm gonna add in a combination of mango and pineapple as well. I'm in that wall. So the best way to start babies or toddlers on a straw is to use like a rubber straw. That way they don't like jam it into their mouths, but unfortunately we forgot ours at home, so we're just kind of spoon feeding it to her and she loves it. Breakfast for me is a giant fruit and veggie green smoothie and usually I snack on whatever form of oats I made for the hubs and the kiddos too. So lunchtime for Max today is a tortilla fold up. Baby Liv is taking a nap. So typically when you're starting solids, you don't have to worry about going from zero to 60 all at once. Ideally, you start with just one meal a day with single ingredient foods, working your way up to two ingredient foods and then plates with multiple single ingredient foods. Right now we're doing two meals a day for Baby Liv, so it'll be breastfeeding in the morning and then about 30 to 40 minutes later, she'll get her solid meal breakfast. And then throughout the day, here and there, maybe like I'll let her snack on some berries or something like that. And then at the end of the day, she'll usually have some form of what we're having for dinner. So by the time they're about nine months to 12 months is when you'll want to work your way up to three meals a day. And then from there on out, you'll want to start incorporating two small snacks in between those three meals. So it's not an exact science, but right now that's where we're at. We're just at a couple meals a day. And for Max, we're making these tortilla fold ups that are so simple and so good. So you just take a tortilla and you cut halfway into the middle and then you're gonna put three to four ingredients on each different quadrant, fold it up, ideally ending with something like guac or hummus, something sticky on the last one so it kind of glues it all and seals it all together. I'm heating it on the pan right now. He's gonna have a snack and it sounds like they're gonna hop in the pool for a little bit. Usually I am grazing and snacking throughout the day. My lunch is usually some type of fruit as well as baked goods. So today I'm gonna to have some berries as usual and I'm also gonna be enjoying this new fruit you may not have heard of. It's commonly known as an egg fruit. So this is in the sapote family. So it's kind of starchy, kind of like a sweet potato. It's kind of like a baked sweet potato mixed with like papaya. So it's very smooth, very dense and super, super sweet. So calorie dense. It's also high in iron and tons of vitamins and minerals. It'd be the perfect finger food for a baby. So I am gonna let Liv try a little bit when she wakes up from her nap. If there's one fruit that I could say actually taste it's like birthday cake frosting. It's definitely this. Mm. It's unreal. These are another fun, they're super tart and sour sweet fruit called the gooseberry. Not to be confused with the Indian gooseberry, but super fun treat. As a late afternoon snack, I usually have my superfood brownies. I've been baking these literally on repeat since I started breastfeeding and they are tried and true. They are definitely a great lactation recipe and they're also loaded with superfoods. Oats, dates, chia, flax, brewer's yeast, cacao. These are all phenomenal ingredients that are said to help boost your milk supply and I can definitely tell you they work and these taste absolutely amazing. Dusty loves them, Max loves them. So my secret ingredient in these has always been the Magic Mushroom Blend from Your Super. So this one contains cacao, chaga, ashwagandha, reishi, lacuma, cinnamon, all organic, no fillers. Coincidentally, my favorites from Your Super are all contained within the Superwoman bundle. So I thought it was fitting for this video because I kind of have to be a superwoman taking care of myself, the hubs, and two little ones. So if you guys want to check out Your Super, I highly recommend the Superwoman bundle. It also contains the Moon Balance blend, which I've raved about in the past. It can help with PMS, cramps, mood swings, 
all kinds of hormonal issues, even menopause. So Your Super has by far the most amazing superfood blends because they are all organic, it's a certified B Corp, and they don't use any sweeteners or fillers or chemicals or anything. Super, super clean, trustworthy company. I cannot say enough great things about them. So everything's linked below as well as a discount for you guys if you want to give any of the Your Super superfood blends a try. You want the hot tub? Yeah. Are you in the hot tub? You want me to make you a peanut butter sandwich? Yeah. I'm quite the gourmet, aren't I? It's not always pretty, but it is delicious, so Max requested after our fun in the sun. This is actually cashew butter and jelly. He's eating really, really good lately. When we don't bug him, he actually needs it super good. So typically if Max is doing PB&J, then for Liv, I'll do a toast and I'll slice it into long finger-sized strips so she can grab it easily. And I'll just spread on whatever nut butter and then maybe I'll give her like some raspberries on the side. Snacking on some baby carrots and hummus, as I always do when I'm prepping dinner. The other thing I've been loving lately is sauerkraut. So this is a local one here in Florida that I get at Whole Foods. It's loaded and teeming with probiotics and I really like the taste. And I'm gonna bake some tofu. First, I'm gonna marinate it in coconut aminos, bake it in the oven for about 10 minutes, flipping it halfway through another 10 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We've been eating more tofu than usual lately because it is a fantastic source of protein and iron and healthy fats, and it's very baby friendly. So usually I'll set aside some plain tofu for Liv rather than marinating it in sweet and salty stuff. Max also really loves it. We all do. So for dinner tonight, the hubs made our famous Indian red lentil curry, but we're trying to switch up some of the veggies and beans that we eat. So normally this one would have cauliflower and chickpeas and Japanese yams in it, but tonight we did garnet yams, which are the orange sweet potato variety and broccoli and sprouted soaked black beans just to change things up. This one is super high in protein and iron. So lentils are by far one of the highest plant sources of iron and there's tons of protein in it too, as well as in the peas, beans, so much good nutrition. And the great thing about these soups and stews that we make is that they last two or three days, so we're not cooking every night. So to make this a little bit more hearty and calorie rich, we usually add some coconut cream, just a dollop to the top. It helps Max enjoy it more and to add a little bit extra calories. And for Baby Liv, since this one isn't super baby friendly, I just set aside some of the cooked black beans and smashed them with my fingers, set aside some steamed broccoli, and we had a little bit of leftover baked tofu. For super little babies that are under a year old, it's especially important to avoid too much sodium intake. For some of these super savory and flavorful, sometimes spicy stews, what I will do for her is, if they're not too spicy, I'll just take some of the ingredients out, like a few cubes of sweet potato, a few peas, and I'll rinse them under the sink and put them into baby-sized pieces for her. Then, Harry Potter. Oh, I'm not Harry Potter. I'm Max. <laughs> Say Harry Potter. Sometimes we also give Max two of these gummies. They're all made from whole food ingredients. So, no synthetics here. And my two desserts of choice are this Hue Organic Simple Dark Chocolate. It is amazing. It has the simplest ingredients and it's sweetened with coconut sugar instead of cane sugar. And dates. This is definitely my top pick. I snack on these all throughout the day. I probably eat about six to eight dates each day. So I just pitted a bunch. I buy them by the three pound pack from Bautista Organic Date Ranch in California. They're so juicy and good. All right, you guys, Max and Liv and I are signing off. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, and be sure to join in on our hashtag Mindful March challenge. All you have to do is use hashtag Mindful March and tag us at Aaron Stanzik, at DB Stanzik, and at Eat Move Rest, sharing your mindful moment for a chance to win a year-long subscription to one of our favorite mindfulness apps. Mm -hmm. Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.